When you start working with parametric constraints, it's important that you have a mental workflow in mind so that you attack your drawing in the right sequence so that you'll have optimum results and minimal confusion as you start geometrically and dimensionally constraining your drawing. So it all starts with the geometry itself. Here we have a basic building footprint and when you look at this, it's pretty obvious that we have some horizontal lines, some vertical lines. We have some tangency criteria here on external curved walls. We have some columns that are located in such a way that they're on common center points. Uh, we obviously have perpendicularity cases. All of our points are co-resident, nice and closed. This is just well-drawn geometry. There, there's no overhangs. Everything's neatly trimmed, correctly drawn. And that's where it all begins because really, what AutoCAD will do as you start to constrain the model is it starts to take advantage of your good drawing habits so that it can correctly place these types of geometric constraints and get everything correct with minimal effort on your part. So the time that you spend drawing this correctly now is going to pay off in much less time placing geometric constraints here in a few moments and geometry that behaves better down the road. So what we'll do next is go ahead and get some constraints placed. Now that we've placed some constraints, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the tagging here so that we can see all of the various types of constraints that had to be put on this to make it behave in an optimal way. As we can start to see little glyphs moving around here, and we can see things like parallel controls, we can start to see tangency criteria. So as you hover over the glyphs, it will start to tell you what's going on here. And you notice that as you hover over the glyph, a little point uh, will be shown to you there so that you understand where the geometry is actually being constrained from. So it takes a little while to get familiar with these and we'll look, we'll look at exactly what these mean in some upcoming segments and experiment with some much more basic geometry so that you can get the feel for what's actually going on and how to place the constraints. You can use these controls to either show all or hide all. So once the constraints are on there, you can of course turn these off and it becomes a lot easier to see. Now the way that you test whether your constraints are actually working is you simply try to grip edit something on the geometry. So what I've done here is just select a line exposing its gripping points, the center of which if I clicked on it would tend to indicate a move operation. So rather than seeing this line just move out on its own, what I see is it bringing the other line with it in a parallel mode. It's brought these circular wall segments out in a tangent criteria. The center column has stayed on the same common center point. So we can see that the constraints are making the geometry behave. The last thing that we'll take a look at is how to put some dimensional types of constraints on your object and then we'll really be parametrically controlling what's going on. So the final piece of the puzzle is going to be placing some dimensional type constraints and I'll go ahead and select a linear one here. What we're doing now is simply selecting what you would normally think of as the reference points for uh, dimensional entities and we'll go ahead and place that. And here, where you would normally get the chance to override in a normal uh, dimensional type of entity, you'll see that there's actually a parameter that's being assigned, a parametric parameter. And that'll make sense later as we look at the parameters manager. If you acknowledge this, now what we have is a dimension that is generated from this baseline over to this controlling point. So this baseline will remain fixed. And now if we wanted to come in here and edit this and override it with some other value, we'd be perfectly free to do so. We would see the geometry would generate off to the right because the baseline remains fixed. We could simply undo our changes and go back. So now what we've got is a workflow, draw it, geometrically constrain it, then dimensionally constrain it. Now you've got a fully parametric model. Now we can dig into how to specifically deal with these geometric and dimensional constraints on a one-by-one -one basis.